Hey, this is Marie, Random Oki Farms. I'm here today with my friend, Robin Phoenix Farms. We're here to check out her uh, market garden. It's the winter and see what she has going on. Anyways, it's a windy winter day and let's go check it out. Come on, y'all. So how we met, Robin's our neighbor also. And well, before we even met, I saw that you had greenhouses. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I wonder what she's growing, you know, like, driving by like rubbernecking <laughs> seeing what you're up to and then beth william's sister um you had some goats, goats that you needed yes. to get rid oh, of oh god i hate those goats <laughs> i, I thought about these, that yeah i took those goats <laughs> just so that i could meet you yeah to see about your uh um, that's funny you should have just stopped by like, yeah yeah i mean <laughs> now it's like I, duh. I, yeah <laughs> no. that's funny you never told me that yeah yeah that's i took your goats and then those goats were bad they were really bad they were really they, bad yeah. <laughs> yeah. but they I'm were glad i'm it. glad they they're gone it. yes but what is but, okay what is so i'm just going to show you kind of what happened with this cold snap we had like temperatures down to like two degrees it was crazy. um it was very cold and we don't get weather like that in oklahoma mm -hmm. very often so needless to say i was not as prepared for it as i would have been had i had we lived and farmed in a location that gets cold weather like that more frequently so um what we did in here these tunnels provide anywhere from like i don't know five to seven degrees temperature increase so there's a lot that can be done in here especially with the sun shining through it's it's actually warm in yeah, here right no, now it feels um, it feels nice so the tunnels provide a lot of protection from the wind and then from temperature as well. And then we can use this stuff called Agrabon. Um, this is a thinner one. I've got some thicker ones in that mm -hmm. other tunnel, but it's just a real thin, lightweight fabric that helps trap in heat. And we cover all of our beds when it's gonna get cold like this. Um, however, with how cold it got and the wind and everything, mm -hmm. there's some quite a bit of damage in this tunnel. Um, kale is pretty hardy. Yeah. And to be honest, I'm, I'm surprised that I have as much damage as I do, but like the whole back half of this bed, all of the Agrabon got blown off. Oh no. Um, but so, this is just frost uh, damage. That's crazy. The difference though, yeah. that you can tell that it makes. So is it just a temperature difference or that the froster isn't able to? Tem temperature, um, definitely temperature. Mm -hmm. So um, how many degrees does just that, that increase? three to five. Oh wow yeah so it, it's it provides like three quite to five a bit yeah and, and then, then another then over mm -hmm. and over. Mm -hmm. wow. um yeah. another farm that we follow um out in Tennessee they had temperature like sensors in their tunnels and they had um the exterior tunnel cover and then they had three row three layers of this agrabon on everything in their tunnels mm -hmm. and it stayed above freezing Oh, wow. Despite being like two degrees outside. That's, so it was pretty cool. And as you can see, there are some spots where like it just got blown off. And this is just frost damage. Um, and like I said, if, if we had temperature issues like this more often in Oklahoma, I'd have more of this on hand. I just don't because typically we don't it's get really, two degree weather. Yeah, um, really rare. Yeah. It was, yeah. wasn't fun. It was not fun. And I think a lot of Oklahomans were pretty unprepared. Mm -hmm. But you know, thank goodness it's gone. Yeah. Um, but if you kind of look through this tunnel, I mean, like the spinach behind me and the mm -hmm. carrots behind me, they were just fine. And they were completely underneath this Agrabon fabric, fabric, no issues there. It's interesting what you, three to five degrees yeah. difference yeah. is. Like that's insane. Yeah. If you come down to the ends, like this is, this is crazy. And this the, here. I mean, just the yeah. minimal temperature difference. And a lot of this yeah. issue, this tunnel has, has some damage and mm -hmm. cold air could get in through here. And this is the north end of our tunnel. So when mm -hmm. all that cold front came through, this is what bore the, uh, the brunt of everything. So yeah. I'm not surprised. All of our yeah. tunnels are the same. Um, the north end took the most damage. Um, and then I was not expecting the romaine to last at all. Really? Um, it, the leaves are really water filled. That's what gives it that really crunchy, yummy mm -hmm. texture and flavor. So they don't handle freeze very well at all. Kale does though, like yeah. certain types it, of this kale. This is really pretty. This is called red Russian kale. Mm -hmm. Same flavor as like the curly kale as what you buy at the store, but it's just pretty. It's got a purple stem and really pretty. Yeah. 
That's awesome. one of our animals' probably favorite thing. Really? Is the kale. Well, when yeah. I cut this out later this week, okay. I'll, I'll save some. Oh, yeah. Are you yeah. going to crop it out this mm -hmm. week? Yeah, okay. this bed and then the romaine behind you, that's all gone. And mm, then I've got cool. another bed, full bed of kale in that other tunnel that's got to go. What so. all do you do to add? I noticed you have a lot of worms. This is all like the yes. worm casting? Yes. This is, what are you doing to, this is, this is worm poop. Like you have a really mm -hmm. high worm. We count. had next to no worms when we started farming. Um, and the only things that we've been doing are in between each bed planting. When we flip a bed, um, we add compost. Mm -hmm. And then once a year or as indicated by our soil test, um, we'll add, um, we're typically low in phosphorus. Um, so we add that at least once a year. Um, like I said earlier, my husband is the science guy with all this, so he could tell you off yeah. the top of his head exactly what we need. Um, I, I haven't started soil testing yet, but we are. You should. This it's year. it's interesting. I've got a, a really good lab that you could send it to. Because um, now that we're actually really trying to get the yeah. farm going, it's crazy the yeah. difference in soil and even like level soil yep. versus slanted soil. Yep. Like. Yep. <sighs> yep. Just it's plant, crazy. just plant, yeah. just yeah. just test it out. Just play in your yard yeah. and mm -hmm. then you can wind up like Robin with a market <laughs> garden. <laughs> That's actually kind of yeah. what happened. I mean, I yeah. had no intention of doing this for a living or having a farm this size. I mean, we literally started with a tiny 45 by 45 foot backyard garden with like three tomato plants and a couple <laughs> squash and chickens. We had six chickens and then now here we are what five years later yeah, and I think we've got is, yeah it's, it's it's been a wild ride for sure yeah and it's it's so <laughs> interesting and oh um we're gonna go down to the Eldridge fam and I'm gonna get some of those hatching eggs she's okay. been t what's that American Brisset Brisset I, I, the it doesn't it's have the e B R E S S E with the accent on it oh okay Brisset. okay the, yeah. they have blue legs yep. and Man, Crandall's been telling me about them. They're so interesting. And what's crazy is that once the dots connected, that she, you've been telling me about the same chicken yeah. for years. Yeah. How cool it is. So we're going to actually try and hatch some. We're going to go down there, check them out. And, Very cool. And uh, we're all going to get to test them out. Yes. Yeah. We'll yeah. see if the, the hype are, is. Are you going to raise them the way that they're supposed to be with the milk and the... At the <laughs> end, I... Th Crandall and I have talked. I don't know if I am. Crandall yeah. might do the official way. We thought okay. about even doing like a taste test comparison. Yeah. If it's if it's really that would worth be interesting. it. To because they like they have to be penned up right mm -hmm. in a certain size crate. Yes. And they're fed a certain diet of like goat's milk or something and wild like that. The, yeah, it's very like yeah. it, it's pretty particular. Mm -hmm. Which I was like, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, just go scratch my flowers and here's some chicken feed and add nitrogen and, <laughs> you know, do a yep. little soil disturbance and we'll yep. all be friends. Let me show you these other tunnels and you can okay. kind of see cool. how those fared and we'll go from there. Did it close this all the, all the um, way yeah. down? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So we're in our second greenhouse tunnel. Um, mm -hmm. The bed behind you, I don't know if you want to grab that real quick, that had our uh, kale mix in it, and it's also a loss. Um, there's just too much damage from the frost. Again, being on the outside edge of the tunnel, I think the agribond got blown up enough where um, it just got damaged from being too cold. But everything else in here did pretty well. Um, one thing that I was expecting, sorry, it's really windy. <laughs> um, so it got really cold and then warmed up relatively quickly. Like today, I think outside mm -hmm. it's what, 60 it's something nice today. Um, so when that happens for lettuces, a lot of times they'll bolt. Um, and I know I've talked with you about bolting mm -hmm. before, but despite being super, super cold at night still, this being exposed to those temperature extremes has started to go to seed. So I'm going to have to go through, I think most oh. of what's in here, um, I need to crop out just because when it bolts like that and the flowers start to form, the lettuce gets bitter. Some of these smaller heads I think will be just fine, but within the next week, um, this needs to 
get taken out too. So I'll sell what I can, what I can out of it. And then mm -hmm. what's no good, we'll go to animals or yeah. compost. So um, here's another example of that frost damage. So some of the leaves on here are just, and like, there's nothing wrong with the rest of this lettuce head. It's just not pretty. So that it's, one will probably be one that we eat. <laughs> yeah, we eat a lot of not yeah. pretty. I have uh, the rhizomes, the iris rhizomes, oh, yeah? if they're damaged, but they're still bloom size. I have a whole section that really? they'll all bloom and then I'll eventually sell off their babies, yeah. but I won't sell them if the rhizome's yeah. not pretty enough. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy how much goes to not pretty enough. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, and, and with vegetables in particular, people are used to buying things mm -hmm. like what they see at the store. Yeah. So a lot of times we'll go to the farmer's market, like heirloom tomatoes, that's a good example. Yes. Sometimes they have what's cat facing or called cat facing on the bottom and they have like brown ridges and like bumpy weird looking stuff on the bottom and people that are used to that perfect round red tomato that mm -hmm. you see at the grocery store will go, ooh, that's an ugly tomato, I don't wanna buy it. Well, what they don't know is that's probably the best tomato they could ever eat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's um, yeah. sometimes frustrating for me. Um, people see things that look mm -hmm. a little weird and they won't even give it a try. And I'm going, ah, you're missing out. But yeah, oh well, I do see part of my role in what I do here as an educator, um, teaching the public about different vegetables, about how to do this on your own or how to do it small scale if you want to have a small greenhouse or a backyard garden yourself. Um, so, and I, I like that part of what I do. Yeah, so. I think that's one of my goals too, is, you know, let alone people seeing where their product's coming mm -hmm. from. Like I'm literally yeah. going to be growing the worms and all the stuff to add my soil. I'm growing the own compost yeah. to amend the soil and also hopefully be able to teach somebody how to do it at the same time yep. that they can do it themselves. Yep. Yeah. A lot on of, whatever scale they want to do it right yeah a lot of what i mm -hmm. learned in in growing the farm i learned from youtube yeah so I yeah mean, there's value in it so yeah we'll see and we talked earlier about soil health yeah that's the the, the basic building block for everything we do here if you have healthy soil you'll have healthy plants and you'll have fewer pest and fungal issues um so there's a lot that goes into creating a healthy growing environment for our crops. Um, now that said, there's always little things that pop up. You might have some kind of weird year where a, a fungus comes through and, and you have crop issues that way, or you might have um, some extreme pest pressure. This last year was mm -hmm. weird for bugs. Yeah. Um, I had harlequin beetles like I've never had before. <laughs> I had aphids like I never had before. Yeah, we um, had aphids and we hadn't, had, and it was only yeah. in certain sections. Too. Yeah, yeah. So um, in situations like that, we do use something called Pyganic. It's an OMRI certified, USDA certified organic product for, for pest issues. But that's like a dire situation kind of thing. We don't like to, to spray anything unless we have to. Yeah. That's the other thing is checking your plants. Yep. Oh my gosh, just check your plants over and over. And if yep. you can nip that problem Yep. Right then, that makes a huge difference. I do a walk through oh. first thing in the morning and then every evening before. I mean, during the winter months when you have less mm -hmm. bug issues, I don't, I'm not and as diligent, growth. but in the yeah, summer. I don't do it. Oh, yeah. In the I'm summer, not, I'm yeah. out here yeah. every, yeah. Yeah. A couple other things, and I don't know if you've ever considered doing this um, beneficial nematodes. Oh, I was thinking okay. about doing yeah. the nematodes. So That's pretty. For your yeah. viewers that don't know what those are or how mm -hmm. they work, they're basically microscopic organisms. Um, that get down into your soil and they disrupt the life cycle of any bug that starts its life in the soil. So your grubs, your beetles, stuff like that, um, they get down in there and basically destroy them before they reach adult size so they can't multiply. Um, so two, three times a year we'll spray our soil with the nematodes. We also use um, bug netting to prevent like our squash. That's a great example of that. Um, when we plant that out, we cover it with insect netting until the plants get established enough and they start producing flowers and then they need pollinators, pollinators to come in. So we'll leave it under cover until it gets big, until the flowers start to bloom, and then we'll uncover it. And that um, then allows the good bugs to get in mm -hmm. and do what they need to do. But it also gives the plant enough time to establish itself so that the bad bugs don't kill it off right away. Um, 
So that's an, those are a couple other things yeah. that. And it's crazy that improving the soil can help yeah. train your plants, yep. like yep. you can train your plants. Yep. So yep. to help themselves. And it's also in, different because pest pressure is different mm -hmm. because I use animals for a lot of the yes. pests and you can't use yes. any. I, w I wish I could use ducks. Yeah. Like the ducks are amazing. Yeah. But I'm also not selling a food product yeah. either. Yeah. So what if you're a backyard gardener? Yes. Oh ducks my gosh. are amazing. You, yeah, you need to have ducks. Yeah. Muscovies. Yeah. Toot toot. <laughs> Those cool. are awesome. Oh, greenhouse. Because this oh, is what I'm going okay. in. This is my problem right now. Yeah. Because okay, so we've we're we're like a step behind you, mm -hmm. but also in like a different direction. Yes. Like in one direction we're we have more the crops we have a slower growing crop it's going to take years yeah. but now we're getting to the p point where we need a greenhouse yeah what what have you learned so uh biggest takeaways for me um with our location and the wind we have in oklahoma um we've lost two whole tunnels before to wind damage and storm damage so there's a couple tricks that we've learned in tying down our rope system um if you're gonna do, a, if you want like a permanent greenhouse, mm -hmm. yeah. and okay, so the the structure that we're in right now, it's it's movable. Um, it's just it's a farmer's friend tunnel. Um, mm -hmm. Each of the bows here has a, a rebar stake that goes down into the ground, and this is just sitting on it. Mm -hmm. And then um, actually, we can if you want to. Yeah, film you want to film in? Yeah, come here. Yeah, and I'll show you kind of how this works for people that don't know. So. Let me dig down here. You can see a little bit. So there's the rebar. This just slides over the top, and then you've got this plate here that holds your um, ties down. And this is the only thing that's holding this bow in place. Okay. Um, a tweak that we've learned is like when you're setting up these tunnels, the instructions that come with it mm -hmm. say to use one rope that goes the entire length of the tunnel. Well, if that rope is compromised in any one space, mm -hmm. then your entire tunnel is compromised. So okay. what we did is we tied down each bow individually. Okay, um, good to know. But yeah, and you want to you want to find something that's going to um, be able to handle the the wind and storm mm -hmm. issues that we have here. Um, if you can do a stationary tunnel and you can concrete in like your your end posts or like every other bow that I. I would highly recommend doing that. See, um, our first one, I'm not going to because learning just from trial and error, like okay. that w where all we planted the iris, just that slight slant yeah. makes a huge difference. Is there yeah. going to be a, a certain area? Like, are we going to use it enough down at the house? Does it need to be up in the pasture? So, so I you're think thinking we're gonna one like this. Like okay. This. Well, yeah, when yeah. you, when, when you get it, I'll come and help okay. you tie everything down. Because, uh, yeah. like I said, we've, we've learned we've the come hard over way. To Robin's house a couple times. Oh and, gosh, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. in the I'll, wind, it was bad, and it was a full was, hundred foot tunnel of all our tomatoes at and, a crucial time of the year. So and the, it was. Your tomatoes is like your main mm -hmm. cash crop yeah. too. Yeah. So and oh, that was that was yeah. bad. Um. Yeah, it was. Yeah. But another thing you'll want to pay attention to is the direction you put mm -hmm. your tunnel in. Um, east to west will give you the most amount of sun exposure as oh. the day goes on. However, I found that running north-south, at least in our spot here, mm -hmm. um, it's the tunnels are less compromised to the way and the wind we're comes have in. The similar, okay. I, okay. I figure we'll have the same similar yeah. problem with yeah. the wind as well. So I'm sure we'll have you come over. And okay. Yeah. visit yeah. and like just meeting people just thank goodness for them bad goats <laughs> yeah, right. yeah right so you can meet your yeah. neighbors and yeah and then be like and hey find a friend yeah. and my kids have yeah. found friends yes so, it's yeah been it's awesome. been awesome it's been good but definitely do your research as to you know climate and and weather events that come through um yeah because like a snow yeah. load i'm sure oh yes yeah. so this, this would not hold up to snow load um yeah. at all um mm -hmm. In fact, in the event that we do get snow, I'm in here breaking and pushing the snow off the top um, because it'll That's it'll collapse. Yeah. Hey, and if you guys think of any questions as well, let me know because yeah. we'll always be Come down here visiting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do a video or literally, yeah. yeah, we see each other all the time. So, what type of cows are these? These are Hereford cattle. Um, 
they're both bred to a Pinsgauer bull. So Pins Pinsgauer. Oh, um, it's I haven't I haven't heard about it. I've heard of Okay, that. I'm I don't want to they're an Australian Austrian Austrian breed of cattle. Hmm. They're mountain cattle. They're both dual purpose milk and beef. Really? Um, they're super cool. That's when I go out to No Name Ranch. That's the type of cattle oh, that yeah. they work Dawn there. Dawn is so cool at No Name that's Ranch. That's hot, so don't touch it. Okay, like hot. Roll you across the pasture, hot. Yeah, so, like no touchy touchy. But There's this is Louise. Food. She's Louise. more more personable than Flower. Flower. Yes. How the, old the are they? The kids named them. Two and a half, three. It's interesting the breed of cattle too. The different yeah like, personality wise, and also being able to handle them. Hey guys, thanks for coming along with us today. Um, if you want to, like and subscribe and make sure you go check out Phoenix Farms. They are on Facebook and she is starting a YouTube. Thanks Instagram for... too. Oh, ooh, Instagram. Yep. Oh, yep. yeah, your Instagram's yep. great. Yep. I like, oh, so... and her TikToks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. I've got some really dorky videos on yeah. there, so yeah, but <laughs> enjoy and laugh. like it too. So, but uh, yeah, don't forget, like and subscribe. Thanks for coming along, guys. Bye-bye.